Yesterday we had a new case, Lian Li Lang called 217 Infinity, and today we have a new AAO. This is Hydroshift 2 LCD S360 TL, and what brings to the table is basically we're having three TL fans, we're having square instead of a circle, and this is why we have the LCD S instead of LCD C. Now, this has a completely different design in terms not just the square and the circle, but we're also having a different type of connection in terms of the screen to the pump because, well, guess what? You can remove the screen from the pump and with pogo pins, you can just simply connect it and magnetically attach it to the pump. It also is a good feature because the pump has those brackets. So you're basically connecting the pump and then the screen covers literally everything up with the additional plastic bits on the side covering up the screw so they're not visible. So apart from hiding the tubes as per usual, as you know, for the hydro shift and, well, practically removing uh, almost all cables and going only with the necessary ones, they're also removing the screws by having a nice seamless look, which is outstanding. Now they changed one more thing and then we're going to go with the details about the hydro shift uh, 2. We're having a new wireless dongle and it's not new in terms of the old one won't work. It's just slimmer, nicer and fits with other USB connections back at the motherboard. So that's great. The only thing right here, you don't have a connection that you can put it somewhere at the back of the case and just leave it there as it is. So this is specifically designed to be plugged in the USB back here. Um, yeah, there is no additional connection to that. But let's go with the details regarding the HydroShift 2 LCD S. So they're calling it hot swappable magnetically mounted uh, screen with 3.5 inch uh, square IPS LCD display, 480 times 480 resolution, 500 nits of brightness and 60 hertz refresh rate. It has the same configuration in terms of connection as the LCD C. So we're having offline mode, wireless mode and USB connected mode, which allows you for loads of possibilities when we're talking about configuration of the screen. It also has the sliding tube clamp for precise alignment of the IO tubes because this way you get a perfect alignment from the top and of course the adjustment at the back giving you quite nice flexibility with the cables for arranging them properly in alignment. Now there are going to be three types if we take into consideration black and white we're going to have six of those so 360 TL, 360 CL and of course finally uh, fanless which will give you an option to if for instance you have already fans inside your chassis you want this AAO you can grab it and just add your fans to it. So the 3.5 inch uh, IPS LCD display is magnetically mounted which is outstanding pogo pins for the connection which is also quite uh, standard now basically to use those pogo pins in every scenario when we're talking about the lcds being attached to i don't know air coolers or aaos the block is surrounded by diffused leds which looks really nice and it's not individual led is not visible which is great so the diffusion of that is done properly and everything is fully customizable with l connect software now the mounting mechanism is actually straightforward the same thing as on lcdc so what you have to do is remove your original retention brackets from the md motherboard and then you place their retention brackets do be careful because the slight movement of the pump block top needs to be from the right to the left so take that well basically you'll see on the brackets that they acquire in the accessory box that you have arrows where the cpu needs to be directed or basically the bracket needs to be directed to that part of the cpu in that sense, you have four additional screws that you use to mount those two brackets. And after that, basically, it's just uh, placing the thermal paste, uh, spreading it up a bit because you do have to slide pump block from the right to the left, as already stated. And then just using four threaded uh, thumb screws to basically attach the pump to the processor, well, block to the processor, and then place your LCD screen to it. And that's basically it. In offline mode, which means that uh, the AAO is not connected to the L-Connect 3, which means uh, wireless mode or advanced USB mode, the device is designed to display essential uh, information uh, like uh, coolant temperature and pump uh, RPMs. In that scenario, the pump speed relies basically on pre-programmed uh, coolant temperature. So this is how it regulates the speed curve and uh, this is how it actually operates. 
for you guys that don't like software this is how it should be done in terms of eliminating additional software on your pc but for instance you have the wireless mode in action you're controlling it with l wireless controller without the usb cable through the L-Connect 3 software, uh, you can customize the screen themes and lightning effects. And this also frees up the USB 2.0 uh, connection at the bottom of the motherboard. And then we have the USB connected mode, which gives you an option to unlock the advanced personalization options like theme information modular assets and templates or presets. Possibility to customize completely uh, adding your, well, basically a preset font, but still adding your own font that you desire in some other presets or possibility to customize it completely. When you access the L-Connect 3, you can choose lightning, pump speed, and then the adjustment for the LCD screen, the same thing, almost the same thing, because you don't have a pump add for the fans, uh, lightning for the fans and the RPM all can be adjusted separately inside the L-Connect 3 software. Now, what we have right here is a perfect alignment. What you can do is you have the upright bracket and the tube clamps that you get. This upright bracket can be adjusted because you have loads of uh, threads in the IO, which give you an option to move it depending on the location of the CPU. So for instance, you have one scenario with huge clearance. So basically the location of the processor is much lower than the top part of the chassis. And uh, for instance, Vision Compact in mesh mode or Evo RGB. In that scenario, it kind of makes more sense to adjust the clamps just to give you that perfect alignment of the tubes yet still have the possibility to push it downwards. But then we have a second scenario, which is basically this one, Lankul 217, which is kind of tighter space. We're having the motherboard pushed much higher than in those two cases that I mentioned earlier. But uh, in that scenario, I personally didn't change anything with the clamps and upright bracket. This goes straight without any problems. You just need to place those clamps just to have the perfect alignment. And that's basically it. And the tight scenario is basically the O11D Mini V2, which uh, actually you're going a bit sideways with the tubes and they are really, uh, I would say, bent. So in that scenario where the block cannot uh, latch onto the bracket, you have to remove the upright bracket just to get the option to move the tubes a bit and get that wiggle space. Now they also changed the compatibility in terms of uh, size of the AAO. If you remember the past generation Hydro Shift was 27, 403, 124.5. This one is 23 millimeters, which is three millimeters lower. Then we have 400 millimeters of length and the white is 122. It isn't drastical, but in some scenarios it might be. So this is good, basically, they they kind of shrinked it down a bit because let's be honest the tubes are running here and you always take into consideration that you need to have space for at least 140 millimeter radiator at the top because the tubes occupy that space but in this scenario they lowered it down a bit giving you more freedom in terms of uh, you won't have a headache while buying a hydro shift and then not being able to place it in a chassis that you desire. In addition to that, we're having uh, specs of the pump, which is apparently improved. We're having the old Hydro Shift at 3800 RPMs, while the new one, the Hydro Shift 2, is 1600 to 3200, and it's lower noise level by 1.5 decibels. And that's outstanding, basically, because we're not just having a new visual aspect, we're also having an improved pump, we're having a different uh, well, basically it's the same connection, but cleaner look, cleaner look without a doubt. So let's check out the performance because in Ada 64 Extreme Edition, and I'm running the same processor as yesterday, AMD Ryzen 9 3 d CPU went up to 75 degrees with uh, 4985 MHz clock speed. The GPU is totally irrelevant in this scenario, but let's move forward with Cinebench and then you'll see the difference. 70.9 on average of 10 runs is the thermals. Uh, last time it was 69.6, so the thermals are a bit higher, but the clock speed 4960 compared to 4943 and the Cinebench score was 40,786 compared to 40,710. So a slight improvement, but I think it would be, you know, up and down with both. Uh, in some scenarios, it the older uh, AAO that I had would perform better. In some scenarios, this one would perform better and it's uh, quite close. Uh, 
I did get better scores with this one, but will it perform constantly in that sense? I can't say if I don't change the processor and check out the different scenarios and options and stuff like that. What we got here is a more cleaner look compared to the Circle one, even though I didn't mind the Circle one. At first I was a bit surprised with the design and everything altogether, but honestly, that didn't bother me at all uh, when I actually built with it. The same thing goes with this one, but not in sense that uh, it bothered me at the beginning. This one fitted immediately when we're talking about visual aspect, easy connectivity. There is no problems because, well, basically you have for the TL fans, you have the regular connection here on the side. They're all daisy chained uh, and already placed on the radiator. And basically at the back, what you need to do is just connect uh, your PWM cable directly to 100% PWM header on your motherboard when we're talking about RPMs. Or you get inside the box uh, three PWM to SATA, which gives maximum power to those PWMs. So you don't have to worry about failure or not moving or not lighting up properly or similar stuff like that. When we're talking about the pump, the connection goes through the tube and then goes at the controller at the back where the tubes are, which ends up with uh, two PWM headers and we're having also USB 2.0 that needs to be well eventually needs to be connected internally if you have enough USB 2.0 headers or you have their power supply uh, the edge one with all those uh, USB 2.0 headers so the performance is really good I do have to say uh, in comparison with some other AAOs with their AAOs it's just slightly better so uh, that's still okay I can't complain about that the visual aspect I'm really digging it fits inside the Lankle 217 Infinity without a doubt and well they just keep on giving just hope they come up with something new soon as well because well it's not about changing the product it's about innovation and they're constantly going into that uh, let's say direction which is outstanding so guys thumbs up to Lian Lee for the Hydroshift 2 LCD S360 TL and the links are in the description so you can check out the prices and details that I might have skipped. And that'll be all for today, guys. Of course, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for future content, like and notification bell. And that'll be all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.